These destroyed military vehicles are covered in a fine radioactive dust that comes from shells tipped with depleted uranium, the heaviest substance known to man. Shells tipped with depleted uranium are a new and experimental weapon used for the first time in the Gulf War. The problem with them is that the radioactive particles released when they explode remain to contaminate an area for thousands of years. The tower uh, is uh, contaminated. The reading is 125 tons per second. These shells can slice through armour like a knife through butter. <laughs> We went to look for evidence of how 300 tonnes of depleted uranium have contaminated the Iraqi desert. In a three-day journey that covered almost a thousand miles, we find radioactive debris scattered right across the region. Exposure to low-level radiation like you'd get from depleted uranium um, could, over the course of many years, cause cancer in whatever... Dr Eric Hoskins lives in Toronto. He's a member of the Harvard medical team who went to Iraq two years ago to study the effects of the war on Iraqi children, especially the problems presented by depleted uranium. When it hits its target, it explodes and there's very intense heat. And this intense heat allows the uranium, the depleted uranium, to oxidize. And when it oxidizes, it then turns into particles and floats around in the atmosphere. So it can contaminate the environment quite easily. Um, and when it does that, uh, is in the form of these airborne particles, um, it can float around and people either ingest it or quite often they'll inhale it. And if they inhale it, it can end up in their lungs. So for your entire lifetime, you're constantly being bombarded by this low level of radioactivity. And so over a period of a number of years, this could, in a small number of people, cause cancer. How many people do you estimate, do you know of, do you have evidence to suggest are walking around with these radioactive par particles in their lungs? Certainly a great number of Iraqi civilians were exposed to depleted uranium in the same way that a great number of American and British soldiers were exposed. Where's the pussy cats? Where's the pussy cats? Terry Walker's job was to clean up the debris of war. He knew nothing of the dangers of depleted uranium mm -hmm. and wasn't warned to take Are any precautions. Mm -hmm. We actually went inside the Iraqi vehicles to see what souvenirs we can get or salvage what was left of it and what equipment they had. Um, we're actually driving through all the wreckage as well. So I'm sleeping near it, eating near it. Um, if our vehicles actually broke down, the, the Challenger tanks actually broke down, um, we were there fixing the engines and we were asking the guys what ammunition do you carry and they were actually showing us saying this is the U tip shell and we were actually holding it as well. When you look inside the vehicles, the bodies were there just burnt or bits of body. You can actually see all over the place and the inside was just a mess. It was just charred, you know, <laughs> there, was, there was nothing there at all. Depleted uranium was also used on bullets fired from machine guns in planes. I was uh, inside my driver's compartment when we were hit on the outside. And Robert Saunders' tank was hit in one of the Gulf War's infamous friendly fire incidents. Over 70 British and American soldiers were accidentally killed or injured by their own side. One of the depleted uranium penetrators went, it went in front of me. It's a probe up that far in front of me. Uh, a few seconds later, another one hit, and that was the one that hit farther back. I turned sideways to look. When I turned sideways to look is when I got a, got a shower of sparks in the face. The shards of metal in my face, before they were removed, uh, some days, some days they'd, they'd change color. Uh, it would go from, uh, go from a, a greenish color, or they would turn blue. Uh, and that's, that was the, the thing that, that got my attention. I couldn't understand why, why it would do this. When we went out there like, and the war started, we were issued with um, a dosimeter, 
which actually collected how much radiation was in the area. It was like a watch, it was black, and he had like a marshmallow dome. This would collect all the information inside the dome itself, and you would have to send it away to somebody who deals with radiation and they check it to see how much radiation was in the area at the time. Every six months they take a sample of my urine. And uh, and that uh, the first the first time period, the first time they did it, they tested me at about 4 point, 4.6 micrograms per deciliter. 400 times the exposure of a nuclear power plant worker. 400 times safe exposure. So meanwhile I have all this radioactive junk floating around inside my body. Now, the Armed Forces Minister has turned around and said the dosimeters were never issued to troops out in the Gulf. That's a complete lie because I had one. The whole of my unit had one. And other units had them as well. And at the end of the war, they collected the dosimeters in. And that was it. Nobody's seen them ever since. And that's when everything, all my documents disappeared. Nobody had any idea where, uh, where the papers were. Uh, when I would call to talk to somebody, I'd get shuttled back and forth between five or six different offices, talking to five or six different people. And um, If you know anything about the U.S. government, well, when they send you around to different places looking for things, they, they don't want you to find out. De depleted uranium is, is more of a problem than, than we thought when it was developed. But it was developed with, uh, uh, w according to uh, uh, standards, and was thought through very carefully. It turned out perhaps to be wrong. It's something that does need looking at, and uh, the, there are suggestions which are denied that it could cause the sort of problems that people have suggested. Well, you know, you've got to review the situation, examine what actually happened if there is cause for concern, and then, depending on what you find, then you decide whether you should review its use or not. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid might happen to you? I'm afraid that in the long term, you know, possibly five, ten years down the road, I'm afraid of getting cancer is what I'm afraid of.